Okay, good uh, afternoon, everybody. Uh, wherever you are in the world, you're, you're very welcome here to join us for uh, what is the uh, the next in the Admiral Markets Trading Spotlight series. Uh, and today we're going to be talking about a versatile swing trading strategy. Uh, as always, thanks for joining us. We really appreciate you uh, coming along to our sessions. Um, as always, we want to make these sessions as as effective and as uh, interesting as possible. So, you know, if you can just put in the chat box, if you already have some swing trading experience, please let us know, or if it's a completely new idea to you, a completely new concept, please let us know, because then, you know, I'll try and, uh, I'll try and sort of uh, um, uh, position the sort of, uh, you know, my delivery to uh, to get the most value for the most people here joining us. But as always, you know, it's uh, it's great to see you here and thanks for, uh, thanks for coming to, to join us. And uh, what are we going to talk about today? Well, uh, briefly, I'm going to talk about, you know, what does it mean to be a versatile trader? How do I define that? What does that actually uh, mean to us as traders? We talk a little bit about, you know, how do we set up our charts? And then realistically, I'm going to focus on what is quite a simple versatile swing trading strategy for you to take away and this is the kind of the first part of it uh, and then we'll talk about well you know how do you trade them okay once you've set up your charts once you understood the uh, the sort of the, the setups well how do you actually trade them uh, and then if uh, there's time at the end what we'll do is we'll take a little bit of a quick look at the uh, the live markets that we have out there so uh, as always as i said thanks for joining us okay we, we love the interactions please you know feel free to uh, to sort of ping away in the uh, the question box if you have any particular uh, questions or if you're watching this on demand later on the youtube channel or facebook page then please feel free to uh, you know give us a like or drop us a uh, a comment if there's something you've got a particular question about we'll be we'll be happy to uh, sort of engage and uh, and help you wherever we possibly can So for those who don't know me, uh, my name is Paul Wallace, and uh, you know I've been trading for a good while now, and I've uh, had the uh, fortune to trade, you know, for myself, for high net worth individuals, and for hedge funds. Uh, primarily, I sort of look to trade FX indices and commodities. They're my sort of uh, main areas to engage with. So uh, for uh, swing and position trades, I'm primarily a dominant trend trader, and for intraday trading, I, I like to focus on being a mean reversion trader. And here at uh, Admiral Bar um, Admiral Markets, we're a Forex and CFD broke with over 8,000 financial instruments. Uh, we've got offices in uh, over 20 countries, so you have uh, global expertise with local support. Uh, licensed and regulated in many entities across the uh, uh, across the globe. And as you can see, they're providing very competitive spreads on uh, the popular trading instruments. So things like 0.6 pips for your dollar, 0.8 pips for the, uh, the DAX. And you're able to engage with the market in the sort of using the world's most popular trading platforms, MT4 and MT5, which are available for uh, both your phone, your desktop and your browser. Uh, and also uh, Admiral Markets provide their Supreme Edition plugin, which is a, uh, an excellent addition to the MetaTrader tools. So ladies and gentlemen, a versatile swing trading strategy. Well, as you can see there, a lot of people are looking for a way to swing trade markets, but they may not be aware of how to do that. I appreciate, as always, we have a broad uh, range of experience in the room. We have some people who are complete beginners, some people are very experienced traders. But what we're going to do today is just share a simple swing trading strategy that will allow you to engage with a wide range of markets. Today, we're going to be focusing on the four hour chart as our main execution time frame. And for today's part one, we'll explain the strategy and just share some simple ideas on how to use it. So, you know, we appreciate that, you know, there's an awful lot of people who are our Admiral Markets clients who are uh, looking to trade around their uh, particular existing day job. So they're you know, not in a position to be able to sort of intraday trade during the, uh, the day, but what they may be able to do is to provide, you know, do swing trading on either daily, four hour, perhaps even weekly charts. And so, you know, we're going to try and uh, provide a little, little strategy here that you could take away and utilize in your own uh, trading business. So, you know, what does it mean for me when I talk about someone being a versatile trader? What does it actually mean? Well, you know, my view, and I'm sure there'll be people who will have different definitions, is that, you know, my aim for here for during our sessions is to help develop you into being a versatile trader. And I define that as you have the ability to trade any instrument on any time frame in any direction, utilizing high reward to risk setups to create positive expectancy. 
So what we find is that, you know, there might be some people who just like to focus on one particular time frame or one particular instrument. Maybe they're just five minute, uh, five minute ch chart traders on the euro dollar. OK, or perhaps they just like to trade gold on the daily chart. And that's absolutely fine. No problem with that whatsoever. But I think as you, you know, as you develop your skills as a trader, I think that if you have the skills to be a versatile trader, to trade any instrument on any time frame in any direction, that gives you the sort of skill base to be able to manage with changing markets. Markets never stay the same, okay? They change, okay? They adapt, they, uh, they, are, uh, um, they are a constantly evolving uh, sort of series of uh, spaces for you to engage with. And so I think having the skill base to be able to trade any instrument on any time frame in any direction is an important sort of skill base to have. Now, once you have that skill base, you might find that you particularly wish to focus on a particular time frame or a particular sort of asset class or maybe even one instrument. And that's absolutely OK. But if you have the skill base, it allows you to go anywhere and to trade anything. And I think that is what will help you uh, sort of have a, a long term successful trading career. So. Let's have a talk about, you know, what's our setup? How are we going to set up our charts, okay, for this kind of versatile swing trading strategy? So we're just going to use our standard chart setup, which, you know, if you've uh, been with us throughout either the Trading Spotlight or Mastering the 4Ms of uh, Trading webinars here, which are all available on the Admiral Markets YouTube page and Admiral Markets uh, Facebook page, we just have a, a standard, very standard chart setup, okay? We're just using candlestick patterns and we have, there are 20, a 50, and a 200 period moving average, which we'll look at in the charts at the moment. Uh, and you'll also find that I will use fractals as well. And uh, I appreciate some people may not uh, understand what a fractal is. It's easier for me to show you on a chart, but if you're completely new, you just see these kind of like these little sort of triangles here above certain candles or beneath certain candles. Those are fractals, okay? When we switch to the, uh, uh, the live charts, I'll show you what they mean. I'll show you how they're actually created just for those of you who are, uh, who are you know, completely new to trading. What we also have is we're also using the stochastic, stochastic oscillator indicator on the weekly and the four hourly chart. And we're gonna be using settings of 955, okay? And that's, uh, I'll show you how that to set that up on the charts in a moment when we switch across. But our first step, okay, our first step is that, you know, we're just going to get into our usual routine, okay? It's, I, I talk about how it's important to have good habits, good behaviors, good routines as a trader. And, you know, what we do is we build these in as simple as possible. So the first one is we're always looking to draw on support and resistance, any patterns and levels from monthly, weekly, daily charts as normal. That should be just your normal sort of uh, way of operating whenever you open a chart. Doesn't matter whether it's Bitcoin, whether it's gold, whether it's Euro dollar, whether it's copper, doesn't actually matter what it is. That should be what you're looking to do, okay, to sort of build a picture there. And you do that by using starting on the monthly, the weekly, and the daily charts, and you start to draw on support and resistance levels, patterns, and particular including levels, big round numbers that are important. So, you know, here's uh, just an example here. This is the Kiwi dollar. Let's just bring up the uh, pen here. This is Kiwi dollar on the, the, the monthly chart, okay? Uh, and you can see here, you know, we have uh, the blue, okay, is a 20 period moving average. The red is a 50 period moving average. And the green is a 200 period moving average. We just have candlesticks here. In this particular instance, okay, you know, bearish candlesticks are black, white, uh, bullish candlesticks are white. Uh, and you can see that, you know, there are fractals in there as well, okay, where they are formed. Uh, and you can also see that, you know, what we've just been doing is just drawing on significant levels of support and resistance there, okay, on the uh, particular charts. And, and that's what all traders should be doing, okay? Just simple that should be almost like you know it should be almost automatic an automatic routine when you're uh, when you're looking to uh, um you're looking to sort of trade uh, markets as part of your analysis as part of your good routines good habits getting ready to engage with uh, the markets So once we've done that, as I said, our step one is to draw on support and resistance levels, patterns, and any particular significant big round number levels from your monthly, weekly, and daily charts as normal, all right? 
Then what we're going to be doing is we're going to select particular instruments that have the following, okay, the following criteria in place. For longs, okay, we have weekly momentum is bullish, and I'm going to explain that in a moment. And we also have the four hour chart, which is going to be our execution chart, has the price, the 20 moving average and the 50 moving average in alignment along with the weekly momentum. And then for shorts, the weekly momentum is bearish and the four hourly price has priced the 20 and the 50 moving average all in alignment with that weekly momentum. And we're going to define weekly momentum as by the stochastic indicator. So I'll just show you what that uh, means in a moment. But I just we're going to have our uh, we're going to understand we're going to take momentum from the weekly chart. But then we're actually just going to trade in alignment with the four hour trend. That's what we're looking to do. OK, so that's why on four hour charts, we'd like the price, the 20 and a 50 period moving average in alignment, all based upon with the uh, in alignment with weekly momentum. And as I said, that weekly momentum is going to be defined by the uh, weekly stochastic indicator. So here we go. Here is, you know, this is that Kiwi dollar chart there. I'm just going to uh, just get my drawing tool up as always. So, uh, you know, what you can see is you can probably see from, you know, from just price action that actually price has been in, you know, for the most part, it's been in a bit of a downtrend. We can see, you know, particularly here at the, at the, the moment when this chart was put together, you know, price was in a downtrend beneath the 20, beneath the 50, okay, beneath the 200. But you know, in particular, it's beneath the 20 and 50 that we're looking for. What you can also see here is this is the stochastic, okay, the stochastic oscillator with settings of 955. And what we actually, uh, what we have is, you know, if you've not used the stochastic, okay, is that, you know, we have the sort of the, the signal line and the stochastic line. So uh, what we have here is, you know, I've colored it green on my particular candle, here, on my particular chart here is that sort of the, the green is the sort of the, the fast element of the stochastic. Let me just clear off the drawing where actually the sort of the red is the slower, okay, it's the slower stochastic signal. So here's what we do on a weekly chart is when we see the faster, when we see the faster, okay, stochastic line crossing beneath, okay, beneath the actual stochastic, well then actually then what we do is we draw in a bearish line, okay, and I just, just, I just use a red horizontal line to give me an idea that this is now bearish momentum. And you can see there what happens is actually, you know, the faster, Faster stochastic line, okay, races away from the uh, the signal uh, until it actually crosses. Okay, we can see here it crosses, it crosses above, and there. Well, actually, what I do is I draw in a green, okay, bullish, okay, bullish horizontal line on the stochastic indicator. And so now, what I realise is that actually I am in a case of bullish momentum. The momentum is bullish on the weekly. So. I'm just using this almost like as a, as a very simple indicator to just give me an idea of how, uh, of how the actual, where the sort of underlying current is in the market, okay, where the underlying momentum is going. Because I'm taking it off the weekly chart, okay, it doesn't turn on a sixpence, all right, it doesn't just flip overnight. I'm just updating this at the, uh, at the end of each week, okay, if, if it needs to be. And, you know, it's not, remember, we're not trying to sort of identify exact turning points here, okay. If you're using a weekly indicator, that, is, that will never be ideal. But what I'm trying to do is just to understand where is the underlying current, where is the underlying sort of stronger momentum. And actually, I want to flow with that. It's almost like I'm trying to surf along with that. That's what I'm actually looking to try and achieve. So remember what we said, step one, draw on your support and resistance, your patterns and levels on the monthly, weekly and daily charts. Two, select instruments that have the following place for a long, your weekly momentum is bullish. And the four hour chart has price 20 and the 50 period moving averages in alignment. For short, the weekly momentum is bearish and the four hour price is price 20 and the 50 period moving average in alignment. Then on all your four hour charts, you can trade all of the pin bars you see, but now using what we're going to call a 50% pullback entry. This would be depending upon your risk appetite. You could also use engulfing candles or key day reversals if you know them. 
If you're not really entirely sure what a pin bar is, well then you'll find that there is uh, plenty of uh, fantastic webinar, uh, uh, webinars in the archive section, dealing specifically with price action, dealing with uh, pin bars, same with uh, engulfing candles. Key day reversals are something that we're going to be touching upon in the, uh, in the next few weeks. I'm going to be delivering a particular webinar on there myself. But, you know, if you just start with looking at particular pin bars, okay, this will be a way to give you a, uh, just a simple swing trading strategy. And this is what you can do. Just make a note, just, you know, watch to begin with. Keep a note of how many of them get triggered and, and how many of them do not. And what we'll be doing is we'll be using the 261 FIB extension target. Now, if you remember, if those of you who join me every week, you'll have seen that actually a couple of weeks ago, we talked about using the, uh, the Fibonacci tool on MT4, how to understand Fibonacci retracements, but also how to utilize the uh, Fibonacci extension as well. And that's, uh, that's on there if you need to sort of have a greater sort of a, a look at that into greater depth. So, you know, what we're looking at here is that uh, this is now that kind of the four hour chart of that Kiwi dollar. And what we can see here is, you know, having drawn on, let me just put it on, having drawn on from the weekly chart, we can, oops, we can understand that, you know, you can see that my bearish horizontal line, when I look at my four hour chart, that tells me that I know that the weekly momentum is bearish. Okay, the weekly momentum is bearish. And at this particular time, we can actually see, and hopefully you can see yourself, the 20 has crossed beneath the 50. And we can see that actually we were in a very, very nice downtrend there, okay? Aligned with bearish momentum. Let's give it this. Aligned with bearish momentum, okay? We knew we had weekly bearish momentum, and we could see that price was in a nice trend. And when it did that, well, then, in fact, actually, what we had was, you know, quite a few, quite a lot of pullbacks, okay, that were ended by sort of either pin bars that provided you with an opportunity to take a short in a line with the four hour trend and also the kind of the weekly momentum. This is what we're just trying to do. Just be very simple, just alignment, okay? We're not trying to be trying to be superstars or rock stars. We're just trying to work out where is the, you know, the, the deeper, stronger current and find that there where there is a trend in place running with that. And that will uh, that always makes us very happy. And we can actually see that that trend ran very nicely until it sort of kind of stopped, until actually the sort of the, the 20 crossed above the 50. And at the same time, you can see that price actually just was drifting back. It was just making a normal pullback. But then that main strong trend, okay, re-exerted itself here. And you can see that the 20 crossed beneath the 50 again. So now we've got price beneath the 20, beneath the 50. We still, okay, we still have weekly bearish momentum. So then you have the opportunity to take the kind of uh, relevant pin bar trades as they pull back. Up until, up until we can see the momentum turns, okay. The momentum turns there, okay, from... From basically from uh, from you know from bearish to bullish, you can see there from the weekly chart. Okay, I've drawn in my green horizontal line. That's already telling me that okay, now we've changed. Right now we're changing. Okay, we've actually changed. The, the deeper current is actually running, and you can see there for yourself. Okay, you know we we had a change here. This was about sort of July, the end of July time. And that ran through to almost the end of September. Okay, so this is a particular case where you know we effectively had two months. Okay, apart from uh, sort of a, a couple of weeks here. Okay, a couple of weeks in the middle, we had you know effectively two months of bearish momentum. The weekly momentum is bearish, and that's not really a surprise at that particular time. U.S. dollar was very strong. Kiwi dollar was very weak as well. So you know we were effectively looking to buy strength, sell weakness, but still actually operate in alignment in alignment with the kind of the weekly momentum and the four hourly chart. So as I said, you know, how do we enter? Well, there are several ways to enter based on your rock, based on your risk profile, not your rock profile. That's a very different thing. Based on your risk profile, the first is the 50% pullback entry. Now, this is a very aggressive entry, okay, with which comes means with that, you know, there is a chance of you getting a higher risk of being stopped out, but also you're likely to get a much better reward if the trade goes your way. So how do we do it? What does that actually mean? Well, first, okay, you know, having gone through all the steps that we've talked about on the previous charts, once we have identified, as in this particular case, okay, we've identified here that there's, we've had a, we're in that uptrend, we've got the nice pullback, okay, it's, you can see that there is provided a nice pin bar off the 20 period moving average, 
Well, normally, normally traders would be, standard traders would be looking to trade the break of that price, okay? Once price broke above there, that is where they'd be looking to enter and where the stop would go beneath the low of that. But we're going to be a bit aggressive today. We're going to sort of, you know, be a little bit more uh, aggressive in our trade entries. And so what we're actually going to do is we're going to identify, we're going to take the range of that pin bar and we're going to identify where half of it is, 50%, okay? The 50% pullback within that, okay? And then that will be our entry with our stop loss in the same place, okay? Just beneath the lows of that pin bar. So that means that, you know, price is actually, it's quite, it could be seen as quite aggressive entry, okay? So, <clears throat> and what we will do is, you know, you set that order for the next three periods. So that's kind of like the next 12 hours, all right, in the, in the, in the four hour chart. We have to realize that, you know, sometimes the, the sort of the downside, because there's nothing as perfection is that, you know, if there's a very strong trend, if there's a very strong trend, perhaps price won't pull back to the 50% line before it fires off. And that is just something you have to live with that sort of just accepting. And sometimes, you know, sometimes we'll find is that actually it will trigger, but that actually it will just continue because the whole trend has changed. And that's okay. That's all right. There's nothing wrong with that. This is about making sure that you take the right trade at the time based upon what the market is telling you in that particular moment. But being able to sort of look at that 50% entry, well, hopefully you can already start to identify that our trade risk, okay, in terms of our capital, uh, not our capital, but in terms of the number of pips we're risking, is actually going to be much smaller here rather than where it is here. Okay, so in terms of our trade risk, we're actually sort of risking, you know, much smaller, effectively, effectively about half of what we were. So in terms of being able to sort of, you know, bump our reward for our risk up, well, this will help us enormously. So remember, and I said, and I keep, you know, this is the way I work. This is ever repeating it every uh, every slide, just so that it sort of uh, sticks firmly into your uh, into your brains. Step one: draw on sort of support and resistance levels, patterns and levels from your monthly, weekly, and daily charts. Select instruments that have the uh, for longs the weekly momentum is bullish, and the four-hour chart has the twenty and fifty and price all in alignment. Or for shorts, make sure the weekly momentum is bearish and that you have price 20 and 50 in, uh, in alignment to the downside. Then on all those four hour charts, whenever you see that you know a four hour chart prints a pin bar, well, you can enter it and you can enter it using a 50% pullback entry. If you, uh, you know, if that might be a little bit too uh, aggressive for your risk profile, then you can just use the standard, okay? Just use the standard entry. But this is about, you know, just trying to give you high reward to risk uh, uh, you know, um, trade setups. Keep a note of how many trigger and how many do not. You might find it's different for some particular uh, instruments. As I said, if you have a 50 cent entry, one of the downsides is if the trend is super strong, the price might not pull back. And it's just about being able to understand of that. And what we're looking to do is we're looking to use the 261 Fibonacci extension as our target. And when price hits the 161 Fibonacci extension at the moment, you're able, you're allowed to move the stop to break even. Okay, so then you're into a yeah, effectively a risk-free trade. But what we like to say is keep let the trade play out. You should expect maybe a hit to begin with a hit rate of a between about 40 to 48 percent hit rate, but you should have an overall average reward to risk of somewhere between two and a half to 2.8 to one, perhaps sometimes even a little bit bigger depending upon you using the four hour 50% pullback entry. But it's always just ensure that you're keeping good records. By keeping good records, you'll be able to find out which of the instruments suits your particular way of trading this. What if there are any particular days or any particular times that either suit you or, or alternatively, you know, do not suit you. But you know, that in that one page there is there is just a very simple, versatile swing trading strategy, okay, that you could take away and utilize and test and, and work with and, and build your own build a you know a, uh, build a you know a complete sort of a, um, trade plan around. <clears throat> So, you know, as I said here, you know, we looked at this before on the kind of the New Zealand dollar four hour chart. And, you know, what I, what's important for you guys here joining me is to really to recognize that what we have is, if I just draw in, is that just to, you know, just be aware, okay, as I showed before, you've got the weekly momentum, you've drawn it from the weekly chart. So, you know what the weekly momentum is, and then you're looking to be for and price and the moving averages are in alignment with that. 
equally when they actually turn the other way just to just to do that it's a simple it's quite a simple sort of way to to trade okay but it, what it allows you to do is to almost build a very simple trade plan it's almost a very simple mechanical trade plan around it that will enable you to sort of engage with markets on a swing basis So, you know, actually what we can see here, you know, it's just gone down to more detail. You can see that actually, here we go. You can see that, you know, where we've got uh, crosses and uh, triggers is where, uh, or arrows rather, is where we can see how many sort of trades we had play out. You know, you can see that there, you know, we've got, uh, what's that? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. You know, that provided, you know, kind of 16 trades there, okay? 16 trades there, of which one, two, three, four, five, of which five of them, one, two, let me check, yeah, of which five of them was right, of which five of them were still, you know, failing trades, okay? There is, there is no perfection ladies and gentlemen okay there is no perfection whatsoever and i'm always very keen to sort of try and stress that okay no trading system works 100 percent all of the time and if and if anybody tells you that there is well then you know they're, they're they're a bit of a fibber okay but that you know was a particular case where you know it worked very very well all right very well you were just being able to run and align yourself with the uh, with the trade uh, with the the trade flows as i said at the time kiwi dollar was very weak us dollar was very strong so you once again you're buying strength you're selling weakness okay and you're just looking to trade in alignment with what is the weekly momentum and the trend now you know that is a that's a nice example i wish they were always as clear cut and simple okay but you know as an example to show you what is possible and what you can actually how you can work with and actually just you know just trading that as a swing just using the four hourly chart that just shows you how you know what the opportunities you have available to yourselves there yep and here's the sort of the next example of it is that you know we're just drawing the tool if you remember what we had here okay is at this point price actually crossed the moving averages crossed okay the 20 crossed the 50 so you know we're not looking now okay the kind of the if remember it's no longer meeting okay it's no longer meeting the sort of the, the filter the rules price actually rallies up it's kind of a nice pullback there okay and it's trend then it basically consolidated it's you know it's it rallied it based and then once again it started to drop and once again here we have it we can see that the 20 crossed the 50 we still have, okay, we've still got, you know, bearish weekly momentum, all right? And we can see that actually there was one, two, three trade examples which worked, followed by the final one, okay, which failed for us before actually sort of what we saw was that, in fact, you know, we then saw that the momentum, the weekly momentum turned. It's turned from being bearish to bullish. So we're no longer, you know, we're no longer in alignment, okay? Even though price is going down here, it's no longer in alignment with the, the weekly momentum, which is actually now bullish. And what we actually see is, you know, and this is where, you know, you start as an experienced trader, you start to realize we had, you know, the actual, the weekly momentum turned bullish, followed by actually, you know, a, an engulfing candle, a key reversal candle, which then actually became a, uh, a double bottom here. Okay, we had a bit of a, a double bottom. We've started to hear we've got a, a higher low as well before price actually starts to sort of rally up. And at first we don't really know, okay, what it's likely to do, but then we see, okay, price actually the moving averages cross. We now we're in a bullish momentum phase, okay? So we're looking for buys, we've now got, you know, where we're looking at is the 20 is above the 50, okay? We're in a bullish momentum, and we can see when price pulls back here, okay? It puts in a couple of pin bars there, okay? That doesn't show up that as well. But it you know, just shows that, you know, we had, that should be there, you know, it shows that there were just setups there as it was price was running its way up into that 200 period moving average, okay? So it's a case of just, you know, we're looking to sort of, you know, it's almost like surfing the waves. That's what we're looking to do. We're just looking to, to find the most suitable waves to, uh, to surf. And so, you know, I have here just quite a few examples with lots of examples. This was uh, Euro Aussie, okay, that uh, you can see here and uh, just drawing in. Just, you know, as always, you can see from the weekly chart, we already know we're in bullish momentum. We've got a green horizontal line there. And then actually what we can see is we've got pin bars and we've got engulfing candles. The you know, price is the, the 20, the 50, the price is already in nice alignment uh, until it drops until it drops away okay until it drops away and that's what we you know we're just looking to sort of just uh, uh, look at and uh, and find out just just look for that alignment and then look to trade in alignment with that 
And this was the same time, this was the kind of the euro against the Kiwi dollar. We know that we've got, you know, bullish momentum there, the weekly bullish momentum, but there's nothing we do until we can start to see price is above the moving averages and they're in alignment, the 20s crossing that 50. And then you can see, you know, there was actually really quite a nice strong trend on there. Okay, nice strong trend on there until actually sort of, you know, we can see price started to get a bit consolidated here. But you can see, you know, there's just lots of examples there of that trade, that trade playing out. Okay, that setting up. It's just once you can get that, you know, weekly momentum in alignment, okay, in alignment with, you know, where the moving averages are going, that's just acts, gives us a very simple filter with which to sort of look at taking our trades. And that's, you know, once again, it's just, you know, Euro, Kiwi, dollar, okay, you can just see that it's already bullish momentum. And then actually as the price returns, okay, it just gives us trade examples. It just gives us opportunities to sort of just join the trade. And that's all we're looking to do, okay? That's all we're looking to achieve. And there's just kind of lots of examples of it just operating where we know that uh, the weekly is bullish momentum. But actually, you know, in this particular case, we can see that, you know, the oops, second, we can see that, you know, the, the first two opportunities, they actually fail for us. But then, then we get actually four opportunities that actually work out for us. And that's, as I said, there's no, there is no perfection, okay? There is no perfection for us at all. It's about us being able to just trying to trade on the right side of the market, okay? Yeah, there is, uh, you know, there's no long side, there's no short side, there's just the right side. And the right side is, as a swing trade, okay, is to try and trend in line with what the, the dominant trend is at that particular time. And there's just uh, examples there, okay, of, uh, of trades, okay, and actually how you can run them and, and work them, okay. We can see that, you know, we knew that uh, at that particular time, Kajian, we had uh, bearish momentum, prices pulled back, where prices beneath the moving averages, pulls back and prizes with our, uh, you know, with our sort of pin bar, uh, which is also a three bar reversal, which we've covered before as well, before actually price in this particular case, price actually runs not only to the 261, but actually runs even further down to the 423 extension, which if you're a super aggressive trader, you might look at, but there's no real need for at the moment. If you can just trade this with the 50% pullback entry and the 261 target, that should just be providing you just with a very nice reward to risk on your trades when they work out for you. Yep, as I said, there's just quite a, a few examples here that are uh, that are available. You know, that's uh, to show that you know how that once we've identified that you know we're in bear, uh, bearish momentum and prices in alignment with the moving averages, we get pullbacks and we get you know pin bars that in this case might also be engulfing candles. It gives us the chance to sort of you know just to, to, to take the trade and, and and run with it. And you know, I've just showing here a few examples of my own trades from the kind of four two three target. But as I said. For us to begin with, the 261 Fib extension as a target is is perfectly adequate as a as a way to as a way to trade it. So you know, as always, you know, if you've joined me before, I'm always going to set you a little bit of homework. Okay, just going to sort of want you to sort of go and look at what you can. So you know, go and look through your favourite trading instruments and uh, try and identify you know possible setups in the present markets and look at that combining weekly momentum with the four-hour moving averages. Just take a look, you know, how many of those setups were created and how, how far did the market move, okay? Was it uh, easy to take you, uh, was the sort of, uh, was the wave being created to take you towards that 261 target or perhaps maybe even to the 423 target if you're a, if you're a very aggressive uh, GBT? But for the most of us, it's just, you know, 50% pullback entry and a 261 target will, will be, will suffice. So in conclusions, uh, ladies and gentlemen, before we switch to the live market, so stick with us, is that, you know, is that being a versatile trader means being able to trade any instrument in any direction on any time frame. And if you have that skill set, that will serve you well throughout your trading career. Today, we focused on a versatile swing trading strategy that combined weekly momentum with four hour trend and some price action triggers. And that is the basis of a simple and versatile trading plan. It's very simple. There's nothing terribly, you know, there's nothing terribly esoteric or rocket scientist about it. It's just there for you to be able to, to watch, to, to learn and to engage with markets from that if you're looking to swing trade particular markets. So, uh, you know, we'll have a little look at uh, the live markets. We've got, a, I think we've got a few moments left, uh, as always, to be able to look at it. For those of you who want to know more, well, then, as always, you can join us on the exclusive Trading Spotlight community. I know that people uh, enjoy having the opportunity to interact with, uh, with other traders. 
And uh, you know, you can as always get a bit of support after the webinar and you can discuss your trading strategies, your upcoming market events and any more with other traders. I'm actually gonna be on here afterwards for about the next 30 minutes. So if you have particular questions or something you'd like to, uh, to talk to us about, then you know, I'll be here for the next 30 minutes. So please, by all means, you know, feel free to uh, log in and actually have a chat with us. And you know, you'll find my colleagues, Marcus and Jens, you can see how they put down as their particular trading uh, ideas, okay? And that Marcus in particular provides an awful lot of great content on this, uh, on this particular, uh, um, on this particular website, you'll also be able to see the recordings of any of the websites you missed. So go ahead and sign up on tradersyard.com. You can join the trading spotlight group, tradersyard.com forward slash group forward slash three one two. And uh, at the moment, it's uh, it's you know you're you're very welcome to join us. Okay, it's uh, you're very welcome to join us. So as always, don't forget to join us next time where we're going to have my colleague Marcus who will be talking on Wednesday and he's going to be uh, sort of talking about in particular a, uh, a, a pivot point trading strategy. So what he's going to be talking about, well, what are pivot points? Okay, when are they useful in trading, different trading setups? And how can they be used to choose stop losses and take profits? So that's uh, Marcus is going to be talking about that two o'clock London time this uh, this coming uh, Wednesday. Check your inbox for the webinar, webinar link. It's always useful to, to join Marcus for his sessions. As uh, as always, there's always plenty of uh, plenty of uh, analysis and education on the admiralmarkets.com website. Always plenty going on there. Uh, and as always, you can always contact us at hello at admiralmarkets.com, YouTube, okay, youtube.com forward slash admiralmarkets or facebook.com forward slash admiralmarkets globally. Be able to watch this uh, the recording of these uh, webinars. So by all means, just uh, engage with us there. If you've got questions, if you like it, if you'd have ideas for future uh, future topics, please, we'd, we'd, uh, we'd love to hear that for you. So I hope you found that interesting. I hope you found that useful. Okay, it's giving you some food for thought, something to take away and work upon in terms of building a, uh, a versatile swing trading strategy. If you'll uh, bear with me, you know, I'll just switch across to the charts so and maybe we'll have a look. We've got a few minutes. We'll have a look at a, uh, a you know, what uh, what the market's doing at the moment and sort of just try and identify where there might be uh, opportunities setting up for us. So if you just bear with me a moment, I'll just uh, we'll just switch across. Okay, there. I uh, I hope you can all hear me. I'm just going to move this, this uh, far out of the way. I hope you can all uh, uh, hear me. I hope you can all see me. I hope you can see what we have here is the uh, Admiral Market MT4 Supreme Edition. Okay, so uh, so hopefully you can all see that and hear that. Okay, and uh, we've got the, the chat there. Okay, uh, uh, super. Uh, uh, Samuel says thanks, and uh, you're very welcome, Samuel. Thanks for joining us. Hope you're finding it useful. Uh, o team says that I'm in and following the teachings. Thanks to the Admiral team. You're, you're very welcome. Okay. Okay, Tim, you're very welcome to join us. Okay, we uh, we try our uh, we try our best to uh, to help you as much as you can. We uh, you know we always enjoy the kind of uh, interaction. Okay, we uh, you know it, it helps us. We always want to try and provide you with the, the most useful information and values. Uh, your name's Cocos. I do apologise. Okay, you're very welcome, Cocos. You're very welcome for uh, for joining. So I'm glad you're finding it um, glad you're finding it useful. So, uh, you know, here's the dollar index, okay? All right, very simple. You remember what we were talking about? Dollar index, weekly chart, okay? So, you know, where is the momentum at the moment? Okay, I've just got in. I'm just going to show you how to uh, show you how to do it, okay? So, indicators, okay? Go down to, we should have uh, <coughs> oscillators. Go down to the stochastic oscillator here, okay? That should come up with what your options are. I have, you know, the, the main, okay? The mains and the sig main is line green, which is the fast. The signal, which is slow as the red, you can see that on your charts. I've, I also make it just a little bit thicker as well, so you can actually see. In the parameters, I have parameters as 955, okay? If you, were, if you really want to, uh, to dig down, okay, into how the different settings will affect the stochastic, you're very welcome if, you, uh, if that's your particular uh, 
that's particularly your uh, pleasure, what you particularly like and enjoy, then by all means, you know, feel free to get stuck into uh, to that. But generally, 955 you know, gives us a bit of a... Uh, oops, I'll just uh, take that one off. Let me just uh, try and get rid of that. We don't need this one. Um, is that uh, is a case of... It just gives us a bit of a smoother, okay? It gives us just a little bit of a smoother stochastic uh, indicator. And, and what we're looking at here, as I said, is just, just every time that, you know, we can see in this particular case here... Let's put so we can see that you know it's crossing okay it's crossing to the downside so that i know means that i'm just going to be getting sort of you know bullish bullish momentum there oh, sorry bearish man I do apologize it's been a long day already okay and uh, every time when i see it cross back above here that's giving me bullish so i know the bullish momentum there okay and when it's crossed the other way it's bearish momentum and that's that's what i'm just looking to try and identify okay and you're doing this on a weekly chart so it doesn't it doesn't change very often okay it's not you know it's not something that you have to um you know, look at changing constantly, but what I can see is on the dollar at the moment, we can see that it's bearish momentum. We can see that actually the price here is, and you know, and I'd be sort of drawing in, this is not um, a normal trade job, but we had a double top there, a nice one, two, three, price is rolling over. If I was to look here on the four hour chart, we know, okay, remember, we know that we're already into bearish momentum, okay? We've had bearish momentum for a couple of weeks now, okay? The momentum sometimes changes before the price action gives us the, uh, the, the confirmation. And what we have here, this is the four hour chart. So if we go down to it there, okay? What we can see is you can see that, you know, price is now beneath the moving average, beneath the 20s, beneath the, uh, the 50. And what we can see is as price pulls back, it, when it hits a pin bar, okay, like this first one, it actually does probably just in front of, uh, it was in front of news, but we got washed out. But as I said, nothing's perfect. But then we actually have, you know, sort of trade setups coming along the way. And that's, that's what you're actually looking to try and, uh, and to try and look at. Just look at, you know, for a couple of minutes, we've got, uh, let's see, euro dollar, it's a very popular trading instrument. And if we go to weekly chart, okay, what we can see is that on here, the weekly chart, you know, the momentum has turned bullish, hasn't it? We've got bullish momentum. Even though we've been in a very long downtrend, we can see the momentum has just turned bullish at the moment, after having been in very strong kind of bearish momentum. So if I go down to the four hourly chart, and let's just zoom out, okay, we can see here, I'm just going to go back to the, you can see here, let's have a look. We can find, should be able to find, I'm going back, here we go. You can see, you know, when you draw it on the weekly momentum, it comes down on across the, we can see that, here we go, back in July, we had bearish momentum, you know, the weekly bearish momentum, and you'll be able to see for yourself that there was quite a few examples, okay, of trade setups as it plays through until it doesn't, then it joins again, and there's quite a lot of examples there, okay, and you can go and do that. But we saw there, okay, at the end of September, the actual momentum turned bullish. The weekly momentum turns bullish here, okay. But, you know, we're not doing anything because at the moment price is just price is just playing its way. And then actually what happens is then the moving average is crossed. And now we've got the 20 above the 50, which is also in alignment with the bullish, mo bullish momentum. Price pulls back and retraces before it takes off. And you can see that there's been a few examples there as prices, prices continued. So there's a few setups there, okay, to look at it. So as I said, just take away, just take open up a few of your favorite instruments and just have a look at that weekly stochastic uh, oscillator. Have a look at how it lines up, okay, with the four hour trend and just uh, take a look and see where, you know, you're able to find particular sort of trade uh, setups, you know, very aggressive uh, setups on pin bars and pullbacks. That might be the opportunity for you to set up a very simple, versatile swing trading strategy. I hope you found that. I hope you found that useful, ladies and gentlemen. Come and join us. As uh, unfortunately, as always, we're uh, we're running out of uh, of time. But uh, I hope you found that useful. By all means, you know, comment that when you watch us on the YouTube channel. And uh, I look forward to uh, seeing you in a week's time, ladies and gentlemen. Have a great trading week.